This tape will allow you to hear normal and abnormal heart sounds. We will start with normal adolescent first and second heart sounds, S1 and S2, as heard over the second intercostal space. The heart rate in a younger child would be more rapid depending on age. Note that the second sound is composed of two components, A2 and P2, separated more widely during inspiration. Inspiration. Expiration. Inspiration. Expiration. As the stethoscope is advanced toward the apex, P2 fades and S2 becomes a single sound. Several conditions, such as right bundle branch block, will increase the separation of A2 and P2. P2 is delayed, and the second sound will be widely split. Inspiration, expiration, inspiration, expiration. The third heart sound, S3, is a normal finding in children and young adults. S3 is best heard over the apex when the child is recumbent or lying on his left side. Listen now to a third heart sound. The fourth heart sound, S4, is also called an atrial sound, atrial gallop, or presystolic gallop. Though generally not a normal finding, S4 is sometimes audible in a vigorously trained athletic child with physiologic left atrial hypertrophy. S4 is easiest to hear with the bell of the stethoscope, the child lying on his left side. S4 is loudest during inspiration. Listen now to a fourth heart sound. When the four heart sounds, S1, S2, S3, and S4, occur in the same patient, they produce a quadruple rhythm. Listen now to a quadruple rhythm. When a third heart sound, S3, and a fourth heart sound, S4, occur at the same time, they may be perceived as a single mid-diastolic sound, the summation gallop. The summation gallop is especially characteristic of infants because of their rapid heart rates. In children, the summation gallop is a pathologic finding frequently associated with heart failure. Listen now to a summation gallop. The systolic ejection sound, generated by the aortic or pulmonic valves, is a frequent finding in children and is loudest during expiration. The sound is high-pitched and best heard with the diaphragm of the stethoscope. Listen now to a systolic ejection sound. Inspiration. Expiration. Inspiration. Expiration. 
A systolic ejection sound audible later in systole is called a mid-systolic click and is easiest to hear at the apex. There may be multiple mid-systolic clicks, often associated with mid to late systolic murmurs. These findings indicate mitral valve prolapse and mitral regurgitation. Listen now to a single mid-systolic click. Listen now to two mid-systolic clicks. An innocent murmur is a common finding in normal children. One type of innocent murmur is Stills murmur. Loudest in the apicosternal region, Stills murmur may have a groaning, vibratory, or musical quality and is audible over a wide area. Listen now to Stills murmur. A common systolic murmur is the murmur of mitral regurgitation. The murmur of mitral regurgitation is loudest at the apex, is audible throughout systole, is often accompanied by a third heart sound, and is high-pitched and blowing. Listen now to a third heart sound and the murmur of mitral regurgitation. There is also a mid-diastolic murmur audible. The murmur of tricuspid regurgitation is heard at the left sternal border in the subxiphoid region. The murmur is loudest during inspiration and is softer during expiration. Listen now to the murmur of tricuspid regurgitation. Inspiration. Expiration. Inspiration. Expiration. The murmur of aortic stenosis is medium pitched and harsh with a peak in mid systole. The murmur is easiest to hear with the diaphragm of the stethoscope placed over the aortic area. Listen now to the murmur of aortic stenosis introduced by an aortic ejection sound. Pulmonary stenosis is often a part of congenital disorders, such as tetralogy of Fallot, Williams syndrome, and Noonan syndrome. The murmur of pulmonary stenosis is heard best in the pulmonic area, the second intercostal space along the left sternal border. The murmur radiates into the neck or the back, has a crescendo-decrescendo shape, and a harsh quality. Because it takes longer for the right ventricle to eject its blood through the stenotic valve, the closure of the pulmonary valve is delayed. This widens the slight gap between the closure of the aortic and pulmonary valves in the second heart sound, and prominent splitting of the second sound can be heard. The murmur of pulmonic stenosis may extend beyond A2, but ends before P2. Maneuvers which increase venous filling and blood flow into the right ventricle, such as deep inspiration, will tend to increase the intensity of the murmur. Listen now to the murmur of pulmonic stenosis. Aortic regurgitation is a soft, high-pitched, blowing, early diastolic murmur. To hear the murmur of aortic regurgitation, have the child sit up and lean forward, 
Then place the stethoscope diaphragm along the lower left sternal border. Listen now to the murmur of aortic regurgitation. A continuous murmur, audible through systole and diastole, usually is caused by a communication between a high-pressure systemic artery and either the pulmonary artery or a systemic vein. The murmur of patent ductus arteriosus is one example of a continuous murmur. The continuous murmur of patent ductus has a machinery-like quality. It must be distinguished from the murmur of combined aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation, the to and fro murmur. Listen now to the sound of the continuous murmur of patent ductus arteriosus. The cervical venous hum is a normal finding, the most common continuous murmur in children. The hum is loudest during diastole in the supraclavicular space over the right internal jugular vein. The hum becomes less intense or even disappears when the child lies down or performs the Valsalva maneuver, forced expiration against a closed glottis. Gentle pressure on the internal jugular vein, just above the head of the clavicle, also causes the hum to disappear. The hum becomes louder when the head is rotated away from the side being examined. Listen now to a cervical venous hum. The Blalock-Tausig operation was the first procedure used for tetralogy of Fallot. The procedure creates an end-to-side subclavian artery to pulmonary artery shunt, which is still employed extensively. A blalock tausig shunt generates a continuous murmur audible under the clavicle on the side of the shunt or over the operative scar. Listen now to the continuous murmur of a blalock tausig shunt. ventricular septal defect is holosystolic, loudest at the fourth intercostal space. Sometimes the murmur of ventricular septal defect can be confused with the murmur of aortic stenosis or the murmur of mitral regurgitation. Listen now to the murmur of ventricular septal defect. murmur of atrial septal defect is mid-systolic. It is soft and associated with widely fixed splitting of the second heart sound, unaffected by respiration. Listen now to the widely split second heart sound and to the murmur of atrial septal defect. An occasional patient with mitral valve prolapse will have a late systolic honk or hoop replacing the late systolic murmur. The hoop is sometimes loud enough to be sensed by the patient. Listen now to a late systolic hoop. Pericardial friction rub 
occurs when there is inflammation of the pericardial membrane. The rub usually has three components, mid-systolic, mid-diastolic, and late diastolic. The rub is best heard along the lower left sternal border. Listen now to a pericardial friction rub. <laughs> 